The WeChat logo may be the most recognized brand in China right now, and it's proudly on display at their hip headquarters in Guangzhou. This campus wouldn't be out of place in Silicon Valley. Young Chinese professionals work and play and epitomize the WeChat generation. From a standing start in 2011 to close to a billion active users in 2017, WeChat is now everywhere. One key to its success is the humble QR code. It's at the heart of the WeChat experience. Scanning the code connects users, makes purchases at the market, and allows you to check in at the hospital or an airport. But behind the QR code is the WeChat philosophy that is very different from Western social media companies. You just do only one thing. WeChat spokesman Zhang Jun says the secret of their success is simple. Put the user first. You should put the need of your customers first rather than what you want to sell them. This means that we must hold back our desire when we design our products. You have to realize your customers' experience and demands and take those things as priority. That means ads aren't everywhere on WeChat. In fact, they're easy to block out. Blocking other users is easy too. And WeChat takes its social responsibility seriously, pulling down posts that the company considers aggressive or bullying or destructive. Fake news or rumors are pulled down quickly too. We started it two years ago. The spreading of rumors on social media is much faster than that under normal circumstances. Thus, it requires our platform to have a perfect mechanism to deal with rumors. For instance, we united 100 companies and agencies to evaluate these rumors. But perhaps WeChat's biggest success is its stickiness. When Chinese people are online and on their phones, about a third of their time is spent using the WeChat app. The company makes it easy and attractive for third-party apps to work in the WeChat environment. For example, you can buy your Starbucks coffee while still texting your friends, rating your experience, sharing your location and ordering a cab, and much, much more, all without leaving WeChat. Tens of thousands of services are now used like this every day on WeChat. There's no reason to go anywhere else online. And it's that which makes WeChat such a force, not just in China, but increasingly in Asia and the rest of the world too. It's a big success, but WeChat has serious competition in China. WeChat's owned by tech giant Tencent, but Alibaba uh, is also, after being overtaken by WeChat, is competing on every platform, as is Baidu, the, uh, the trinity of BAT, as it's called. And there are many other players coming into the market, too. It's just such a huge and fast-moving market, Rochelle. Remember, there are still hundreds of millions of Chinese citizens still to get online and use their first smartphone as well. So the home market is great. And the competition uh, internally in China is what's driving all this innovation as well. Now, Nathan, you actually got to visit WeChat HQ, and you also spent yeah. a lot of time using WeChat Pay, the platform in China. Yeah. What was your experience like? Uh, quite incredible. Um, you know, uh, before uh, going to the headquarters, I really wanted to get used to the app. So I basically started using it here in the United States before we went. It transforms it in China in terms of messaging and voice calling and all this sort of stuff. But WeChat Pay, as you can see here, we spent a day I did, went to a dim sum restaurant for breakfast, paid seamlessly uh, using the phone. Here's me in a car uh, where we went to fill up with gas. You don't even have to get out of the car. You just scan the QR code. You could order bottles of water as well, snacks to be brought to your car, all on your, on your phone. Uh, quite incredible. And, you know, a lot of third-party finance companies have moved in and make this very, very easy. So you, you think, OK, it's OK with, with uh, you know, restaurants and gas, but... When you're buying oranges at the market or buying a fish, you can now just do a QR code on the scales. Um, so it really is penetrating everyday life. It's quite incredible. Now, let's also look at the people behind the company, the actual work culture at WeChat. How does that compare to, say, Silicon Valley? Oh, my God. I mean, I thought I was in Silicon Valley when I was in uh, Huangzhou. You know, everyone was trendily dressed and uh, riding around on bikes and, uh, and just it, it felt like a real hipster culture. You know, that they have coffee bars that are open all the time, free food. You know, it's a very sort of relaxed uh, uh, working environment. In fact, we've got a little video, video here. They actually even have a slide in the middle of uh, uh, WeChat HQ, which of course I couldn't resist. But you know, it's that work and play culture uh, coming together. So, you know, when people think that China is behind with the culture, it's got the apps, it's got the culture, it's really trying to foster young people to come in. And I can tell you now, companies like us, you know, media companies, are competing for talent with people like WeChat as well, because a whole new universe is opening up.
stiff competition indeed. Thank you so much, Thanks Nathan King.